Hi there, my name is Keith O'Reilly and I'm going to be doing a still life in watercolour paints of some flowers and it's painting for pleasure and for recreation. Now, oh, here's one I prepared earlier. So we're just going to be <coughs> working on a very, very simple introduction to painting a few spring flowers. So we get right into it now, <coughs> nice and quick. And uh, this is an ideal, an ideal subject matter at this time of the year because uh, your flowers are readily available in any of the shops. I got these down in Lidl this morning and um, nice and handy. And there's some lovely shapes here to, um, to tackle for anyone starting out in painting. <clears throat> so if you're only getting back into your painting or if you're only beginning, I'd suggest a flower is, is definitely something that's um, well worthwhile having a go at. So I have my brushes here and I have some paint. Now just to give you a quick idea here that I have my paint here in a video tub <clears throat> and you can see I just have pulled out six or seven colors. This can be done in poster paint. It can be done in acrylic paint if you have that. Anything you can get your hands on. It can even be done in those little trays where you get little watercolour paints. And we're not going to be using a fraction of this paint. That's why I have it in a video box so I can lock it up later on and use it again. So we're going to be using a tiny amount of this paint so you can get your paint from any source. And essentially it's going to be like a watercolour that we're going to do. Um, I do like the acrylic myself but it's um, poster paint if that's all you have at home would be absolutely perfect for this job as well. And if you have a cloth or a newspaper, I'm gonna use this surface under the tray here as a way to dry my brush. And then I have a mixing tray here with these little um, dividers in it, and that's ideal as well. So they're my two, my two fellas here, and I'm gonna keep him flat so that I can mix away. So off we go, so. Um, First of all, I'm going to get this leafy green tone and I'm going to put this in everywhere I can in various amount, various varying amounts of it. So, um, just get a nice consistency there. I'll just show you that now so you can see it. So I'm just watering it down there and um, putting a lot of water into that. And you can try it out on your on your little um, sheet of paper underneath you to see what it's like. All right, off I go. So I'm using a big brush. It's a um, size eight brush. And the reason I use a big brush is it stops me being too fussy at an earlier stage. I will get fussy, but you can't help it, it's painting. But um, we want to delay that fussiness for as long as you can. So I hope you can see me now beavering away here. You don't want to get too fussy too soon. That is the trick. Um, I'm going to leave little lines in between each, each leaf. You don't have to do that, but I find it handy because it reminds me of where one stops and the other starts. And it's handy when I come back to it later. And it's preserving the drawing, so I don't have to draw it again. A lot of the time with painting, it's learning by doing, and making your mistakes, and you're just not falling into those little mistakes again the next time. So it's just experience you're building up over time. And if you decide <clears throat> that you're not going to get too frustrated about your fundamental mistakes at the start, you'll enjoy it more. But um, sometimes people are easily put off. You can't expect to, um, to naturally know all this stuff. You have to try it, tear it at first. God knows I've made enough mistakes doing this stuff. So, this is observational drawing. 
you are painting, you have an object in front of you and you're objectively trying to tackle it. I can't stress the importance of having the real thing in front of you because it, um, even the smell of the flowers helps you, I think. It's all part of how the brain works. So having a picture of it in front of you is good, but having the real thing is way better. Um, way better. It's not always possible though. You don't always have access to this stuff. But um, you should try and work it in that you have it. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just blocking in the main the main um, shapes and forms of the objects that I'm painting. And it's establishing the drawing. In a way, you're kind of going back over your pencil drawing with a brush here. As I said to you earlier, some people like to just go this road. And it's, it makes for a very exciting and spontaneous looking work. And certainly if you're if you're doing this type of painting every day of the week, you would probably forego the pencil out. Right. Um, so I'm just blocking in my my fella here, and you might find that when you're painting this that you might change your mind. You might tin out one of the branches there, like I just did. And you're making little adjustments and refinements to your drawing earlier. So it's a good opportunity to change your mind as you're going along. And you can come back then and rub out the pencil line at the end of the, the painting. So it's, um, don't worry if you have to go and mix that color again in between. You might have mixed enough. I don't think I have either. So don't worry about that. That's hooker's green that I'm using here with just some ye lemon yellow. But don't worry if you have to remix and you're worried about it being the wrong color. Because you're going to be going over this several times with different washes of green. So it's not a biggie. I'm sure mine isn't the same color either. Um, so now. I'll tell you now, because we haven't all day, I want to try and do this in about 15 minutes. And um, you can stop and start the video. And go with it yourself. So, oh. so that's my leaves. I'm going to leave them boys dry now while, um, while I'm tackling the the little flower heads here so they haven't opened up yet so it's going to make it way easier to paint them um yeah painting flowers in full bloom you need to be brave i don't know am i that brave to do a video on it yet maybe when they open up later in the week i'll come back to the game I'm going to start again now. I hope you can see me mixing here with a wash of yellow um, on the, this little tulip over here. And so because it's watercolor, you're using the white of the page to shine through the paint. So be careful you don't fill in absolutely all of the, of the head of it. So do it in patches. Just think of it as patches of yellow. And if you missed a patch that later on you can always fill that back again. So less is more. Um, so I hope you can see that now. The yellow is hard to see. And there's a nice stem coming off this now. I'm going to change the stem a little bit. I made it a bit too fat. I drew more. That's my yellow there. And I put a small little bit over here. There isn't much yellow in this one. So I'll just put a little bit. So. Like that. Got some nice green on that stem as well. So I'm going to put some green while I'm here. 
and there's some green up here. Pop it in. You might as well. And we're gonna get straight into doing the colour on that. We won't delay it. So I have a nice pinky colour here for you. You don't have to do it in pink though, even if your colour or your flower is in pink, you change it to red. You don't have to stick to it. Or I'm mixing some red in with it and I'm making sure then that I use a watery version of that next door here in the in the, in the little channel next door to it. Because I don't want to overdo it, test it out first. And, um, and off you go. You notice that the head of it is kind of like, it has these little... It's not all one continuous roundy head. It has some lovely detail on it. So we're we'll just trying to get that in there. Some details you can get away with leaving out, but there's other ones then that you have to really try and observe. And again, it's a watercolor sort of a approach we're taking here. So we're putting on we're putting on tiny amounts of paint really and if you want to blend it in then wet your brush take that heavy paint off it and just while it's all still wet i should tell you about the paper as well do everything backwards but the paper um, i'm using here is quite strong it isn't like your ordinary photocopy or paper i might as well tell you that um where would you get that paper if i was you i would go into the um a lot of shops closed now at the moment but if you can get some letter writing paper that would be quite strong you might have some of that stuff around the place uh, a heavy kind of a strong letter writing paper would do the exact same job it could be cream you might have cream heavy writing paper that would be perfect and um, cream would, wouldn't be a problem at all so on so I would suggest you use the strongest paper you have because it absorbs the paint better. Um, especially for this. So we're on to our orange. Now I just happen to have the luxury of having orange paint here. I don't normally have it. So I'm gonna use it and be lazy. But you can mix up your orange using a little bit of yellow. Oh, sorry, a good bit of yellow and a tiny amount of red. Um, so you can see me here mixing. People get a bit stressed out sometimes about mixing. They say they don't know how to mix. Um, mixing paint is again a thing that you you just fall into. You keep going until you find the paint, the color you want. I know you might say easier said than done, but again, if you go searching for the color and start experimenting, You'll, um, you'll start coming across the colours that you want. There's a couple of basic things you need to know, all right? You can easily look those up. Obviously, blue and yellow make green, those types of basic primary colours. But after that, it's all experience. So, And um, there isn't an awful lot to it. So don't get overwhelmed by the mixing. You don't need to know a huge amount of theory. You just need to get stuck in. Now, sometimes you put the paint on neat. So this is where the acrylic can come into its own. There is a channel here in between and it's quite thick and strong in color. So I'm just gonna do that there now. And that can be drying while I'm going back to my greens. I hope you're still there. I hope my camera setup worked. Sometimes you take these videos and go through the whole thing and you find out that something was out of memory or the battery died and bang, you have to go and do it again. But sure, character building stuff. But sure, what have you? do it again if we have to. Now, it's good not to dilly dally with these things and just try and move through them quick. And you can always say to yourself, I'll come back to them. Try and keep moving around the painting, working it as a whole, a unit. 
instead of getting bogged down. So even though I'm not completely happy with that, I'm going to come back to it. Um, there was one area in there that I wanted to dig into. When I say dig in, I mean just get some depth into it. I'm using the paint neat here now, my acrylic paint. So I've gone from watercolour now to using neat paint. Now you can buy special watercolours and you can buy the watercolour paint, but I I don't do a huge amount of watercolour, so I just use the acrylic and I really water it down. So there's probably professional watercolours out there, horrified at me using acrylic as watercolours, but um, they'll do fine for beginners. And as you get into it, you can learn more about your materials. Sometimes people spend lots of time flapping around about the materials when they should be painting. So don't fall into that trap. Um, I'm stuck to the same brush all this time. I'll get off it now in a second. It's good to move around on your brushes as well. And... Um, Moving around with the brushes is a good idea to give you a variety of marks. And uh, it's very easy to do what I'm doing here and just stick to the one brush. But a lot of your mark making will end up becoming repetitious. So you want to try and get off that brush as soon as you can. So bye bye to that brush and we'll jump on to my other one. So back to my Back to my stems, or my leaves, stems. And we're gonna try and go a bit darker this time. Um, mixing in some light yellow, light green into it. And we I go again. So this time now I'm gonna try and selectively pick out shadows and I'm putting the darker tones over it. Um, darker tones in there. Hope you can see that. And uh, I'm going to get some of the big areas and then I'll go back to a small brush again. Then, as I say, I'm trying to vary the marks as I go along. So I hope this will encourage you to do some painting. Get out the, those materials stuck up on the press or, that you have for a while. It's very easy not paint. You're going to have to make an effort to set yourself up. But once you get going, you'll be delighted. There is a lot of instructional videos out there, but um, you'll only learn so much from looking at the video. You need to, you need to put legs on it and actually take it on yourself. So videos are fine, but what I think is better is if you watch a bit of a video, try it and then press play again, try another bit yourself and press play again. And stand back from your work then when it's finished. Don't be up too close and too critical of it. You have to give it a chance. Pretend somebody else did it. And what would you say if somebody else did it? You wouldn't uh, slate it straight away. You would um, start off by seeing the, the good things about it. And you should do the same about your own work. Because if you're over critical at the start, it's... You're inclined not to do a whole pile of painting again then after for a while. So try and have a bit of fun doing it. Just give me a few bits of advice. So now I 
and don't take on anything too complicated at the start either. That's one sure way to put you off painting. Keep it very simple. No matter how simple it is, you'll find a challenge in there somewhere for yourself. So now, just block it in here now, again with the same colour. I haven't gotten into many different shades of green yet. The more shades of green you can get in there, the more sophisticated it'll look. But we, um, we haven't gotten going yet with the... I'm going to give up that push for a while and go back to my other little friend. The reason I like this other guy is he's got a real pointy top on it and um, you can get in there for some decent drawing. So I'm going to have to go a bit darker here now. I'm going to make the paint a bit stronger for you. Hope you're still there and you can see me. So now we're on to the home stretch now. So Anywhere where I see deep tones, a good way, I have one eye that is a bit blurry. So I close my good eye and I use that blurry eye. And it helps me just simplify out the, the tones in the picture. It's very handy. So I can see where the real deep tones are and it helps me to make the painting pop. What I mean by pop is pop out. Um, so I'm putting in a dark tone here, but be careful you don't overdo it. Um, because if you overdo it, you will smother all the light tones. So you have to get that balance right and there to gain that practice. So you want it to pop out, but you don't want it to look gaudy either. Um, and the pressure that you put on the top of the brush is going to determine how much paint comes off the top of the brush so experiment with that leaning on the brush and lightening off the brush and leaning back on it and you'll get you'll get really knacky at doing that too so again now i need to hold on so i'm washing back over the area I washed earlier i think this is my third time washing over this area and it's building up the tones if I had a dry brush like this boy here, I could just tap that in as I'm going along so that I don't need a big ridge. Um, there's some lovely lines there. I want to get those in. I want to get some of them in. Uh, if I go here now again, get in some of the dark tone underneath. It's probably a lot more than what I'm marking in here, but. I just want to suggest it. I don't need to have every single bit of it in there. I just get, need to give an idea of it. It's a great thing about painting. You can decide how much of it you want in there. So, a great thing about painting as well is uh, this is good for any age. You can be five, you can be 55. Any age. I think I was listening to a lady on YouTube last night. She was saying it's not like a soccer player. When you get to a certain age, you have to pack it in. Painting, you can just keep going. It's uh, there's no limit. There's no age bracket where you have to stop. You get better with age painting. So. Off I go now. I have to be careful. I'm using my finger here as a guide because I don't want my hand to mess up where I've been already. So be careful of that. Um, get used to kind of floating your hand over the painting. I'm using your elbow. At the start, it'll feel a bit funny. Now I'm just going to cut in along there. Um, and in here as well to make it pop out like so 
Um, what else have I to do now? Real quick now, I'm going to get some real dark paint. Because I really want to get into that. Up here. I'm going to go mad up here now. Really dig in. When I say dig in, I mean go deeper. And make it really jump out of the job. Oh, I did one earlier, so I can show you that as well in a while. Took my time with it. Um, because um, well, I wouldn't be brave enough to do this in one go. Definitely not. So we stopped here now before I make a hands of it. I'm using my dry brush to blend it in, like that. So on, and I'd like to get some real dark tone in here in the corner the way it turns around. Repeat that again. And I'm in a rush now because I want to get the shadows in for you. Um, because I do think they'll make a big difference. Just very quickly, I need to do a stem up here. So I'm going to re reuse some of the old paint, the yellow. Just going to mix it into the yellow. Kind of an off, it's like an off white color. It's like a browny off white color. Put that in there. Hope you can see that. Pop him in there. I might use some of it over here as well. It's good to, when you get a colour, to reintroduce it somewhere else in the painting. Let it pop up in the marriage somewhere else as well. It's just a little trick that the um, painters use when they bring in the colour. They don't just leave it at that. So it can look disconnected from the rest of the picture. But um, this isn't a very complicated picture, so uh, we'll get away with that. Now I'm going to try the shadows real quickly for you. So I'll buy the right push for that, I do. Let's see what I say. Right, this fella here as well, he's a bigger one. Go on big, go big or go home. So the shadows then, uh, I'm just trying to remember now, what did I do the last time? I used some blue. And I use some brown and I really water down that. Oh, I like the idea of having some blue in the, the shadow. Just try it out. I'm going to go really light now, starting off. Because. So, so just you're echoing the shape of the head there of the um, even though that shadow is a lot darker we will address that later on and show you how to do that um we're going to work back into that shadow there in a while but first of all i just want to get a general shadow of for all of the for all of the um composition so you're really now not taking any chances here, so I'm really watering down the shadows here. I don't want a big black gaudy shadow under these. It's a flower, you have to remind yourself of that, so it, it really does require um, a sort of a more um, gentle approach to everything that you're doing. Um, Sometimes the shadows go away in the opposite direction because of the way they're lying on the table. So um, you can play around with them. You don't have to be doing them exactly the same. As so long as you echo the shape, whatever you're doing a shadow of, that it echoes the shape of, of what's under it, you'll be fine. And again, keep her shadows with very little texture in them. 
you don't want too much texture you don't want too much personality in your shadow that's just a tip also when you're drawing you only want a bare flat tone I do like to put a little bit of blue on too. Um, another thing that we won't be getting into today, but you can try it, is working back into one of these paintings with some colour pencils. Something we do a lot, I do a lot. And this can give you um, just an added dimension. And, uh, um, A texture that you don't get with the paint and again you're being selective about where you're working so that is this one then i'm just going to move it away from the the object and as a, if it's moved away from the object it probably will need to be a bit lighter so i'll try and remember that so i'm just going to echo this shape here Sometimes when you put it down first, you're inclined to get a slight heart attack because you go, oh my God, I'm after making a mess here. But sure. That's why using the bigger brush is good for this kind of stuff because you can tackle it quickly. Whereas with a smaller brush, you won't be able to get in there and, and hit it fast. If you want to blend it in, just wet your brush with no paint on it and just, just give it that and you'll get away with that because it'll look like a double shadow. We like the double shadows. So now. I'm just going to do one last thing now and then I'm going to do some finishing touches. So, get some blue going here. I'm just going to pretend there's more shadows down here. I'm kind of going out of the picture frame now, you can't really see that, but I'm just putting in a few more shapes. Just to kind of make a composition out of it. I'm just pretending that the shadow is from something else that's out of the picture frame. Like that. Um, and was there one last thing I wanted to do before I sign up? Oh yeah, I'm going to go back over my this area here. I just want to tidy that up. So we're nearly there, we're nearly at the end. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is the first in a series of little tutorials I'm going to try and do. And um, and if you liked it, good. If you got something out of it, that's good. And hopefully what you got out of it is you, you got influenced to maybe just try it yourself. I don't have all the answers, but if it only encourages you to take out the brushes and get a simple flower from your garden or your next door neighbor's garden if they'll give you one or down in the shop and um, put it down on a white sheet of paper draw it out and get any paint that's in the house at all even if you only have two or three colors use those colors and have a go So, was there one last thing I wanted to do? Oh yeah, I knew there was something else. I just wanted to put in a slight reflection of of the um of the flower in the shadow. So, so I'll just put in a little wash of the color of that flower. That's that one. 
and we do the same up here. Be careful you don't put it too much in. It's only a bare hint of it. You need to get used to how much water and paint to mix. So you get into that after a while. You can do the same with the greens as well. You can put a slight hint. You don't want them looking like leaves though, so be careful. And you could do the odd one in blue as well. I'm gonna do this one in blue. And it just gives it it just gives it another little dimension. It doesn't look too uniform. So I'm just gonna sign it now, if you can see. Yeah. And don't forget to put the date. And finished, all done and dusted.